This video will be a short video in which we see how to differentiate the base trigonometric functions. Like most problems in maths, and especially pure maths, it's best for you to try and solve these problems by yourself, although some clues are always helpful to guide you in the right direction. The first step to solving this problem is the same as any differential, differentiating from first principles. We will take this formula as a given, as most people watching this video will already know where this formula comes from, but if not, it's quite an intuitive formula and I'll link some videos in the description explaining it. We'll start by differentiating the primary trig function, sine. We'll substitute sine into our functions and it will leave us with a fraction we need to simplify. From here my next clue will be to use the addition rule, which is something else which can be proven by drawing a lot of triangles, but for now, again, we'll take it as a given. For those of you who don't know the formula, I've displayed it on the screen. Please pause here and try to simplify the fractions after applying the addition rule. For the rest of you, we'll walk through the expansion and simplification. So, we'll have sine of x cos of h plus sine of h cos of x minus sine of x all over h. The next step now is one of the most difficult to think of, but once you see it, it's clear. h is defined to approach 0 and is therefore an incredibly small number. When we look at a graph of sine of x and cos of x at the point of essentially 0, but not 0, we have an incredibly close approximation of these functions. We can see that sine of x is almost 0, and as h tends towards 0, sine of x can be modelled by x. Similarly, for cos of x, we can see that it's almost 1, and as h tends towards 0, cos of x approaches 1. This will give us some new substitutions which we can list at the bottom. We can now simplify our fraction by substituting our values for sine of h and cos of h. Finally, by simplifying our sine of x out, we are left with h cos of x over h. This now simplifies to just cos of x, therefore our derivative to sine of x is cos of x. The derivative of sine being cos if nothing else is beautiful, considering how closely related they already are. The graph of sine and its derivative is quite simplistic yet fundamental. Moving on to the derivative of cos, we already have all the formulas we'll need. The only new one we'll need is the addition formula for cos. The process of expansion and simplification now is much faster and intuitive. Please give this a try yourself. We're finally left with the derivative being negative sign. An interesting feature of the series of derivatives is that it's periodic. A given derivative can be easily calculated regardless of how far into the series we go. This leads to some beautiful functions such as the Taylor series which has countless applications. I would like to finish this video by leaving some additional problems. The solution can be determined by following through the same steps we used in the video, and you should arrive at something quite interesting. If anything else was unclear, feel free to comment and I'll try to help you out. I hope you enjoyed.